Tocolo mangal pe te piado. Your 
your grace. Thank you, Lord, for this abiding place. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for this abiding place. you're not dead the dead cannot praise him somebody said well my you know that sounds a little bit strange obviously I'm walking around breathing I'm not dead well there's not just a, a physical death there's a spiritual one 
and the dead cannot praise him but all who love his name say continually the Lord be magnified in me all who love the Lord say continually the Lord be magnified in me be magnified in me Lord Jesus be magnified in me. Ha ha. Woo! Ha ha ha. Sabadeo! Sabadeo! Sabayo pa! Sabaya te ala cacho! Rabeo! Zizea te ala bakeo basoto! Be magnified, Lord Jesus Christ. Be magnified, oh God, in me. Be magnified, Lord Jesus Christ. Be magnified, oh God, in me. Let all who love the Lord say continually. Lord, be magnified. Be magnified, oh God, in me. Oh, Lord, be magnified, be magnified, oh, God, in me. Oh, Lord, be magnified, be magnified. Ha, 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 ha. Woo! Ha, ha. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ribo so cold in here. Well, let me just tell you something, dear people. First of all, we're glad you're here. We love you. But the most important thing is, is we want to help you understand how to have all of your love and all the expressions of your life directed right in the proper place where it should be. To the one who loved us so much that he delivered us out of the realms of hate and strife and all the rest of that mess. Listen, I got something to present before you that is worth you giving all of your life for. And it is the manifest power and glory of Jesus Christ in the midst of his church. Can't happen unless you and I allow the realms of the spirit of truth, the realms of the spirit of God, the expressions of God to flow out of us with inexhaustible and unlimited expressions as though it were like rivers converging on the inside of us and busting out of us. There's nothing really like that on the earth except for if you looked at things like Niagara Falls, which a little, little frosty right now, or uh, Victoria Falls, where all those streams converge down into the Zambezi. And, huh? What if you were to give yourself over to the kingdom of God and make God's plan and purposes and will more important to you than anything else? Jesus loved the church so much that he purchased it with his own blood. And he's asked us to come and follow him. God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ so purposefully wanting to baptize and glorify the church which is the living expression of Jesus Christ right now on the earth sent the Holy Ghost without measure and unlimited divine power and glory. It's about time you and I begin to press in to move past the religious strongholds that have taken claim upon the church and have dominated over it for now so many years. So long it is dominated over the church that, a, that generations have raised up to now think that the expressions of what goes on in the modern day church is the model of that which is right. And they've forsaken the word of God altogether. When God showed us very clearly what it looks like as he demonstrated it in the very life and person of Jesus Christ. No one need make any mistake about this. You don't need some great theologian. You don't need a, a, you know, a great company of scholars. All you need to do is look at who Jesus is. And then begin, instead of being overwhelmed with your failure, your lack, whatever's going on in your life. Begin to give yourself passionately. For him to do a work on the inside of you so that Jesus can be glorified through you. To begin to give yourself over to more than anything else. Wanting to see whatever it takes. The glory of God manifested in his church. Which begins with you individually. 
Because you, you can be down on your face and crying out to God and pleading with Him and fasting and praying that there would come a great revival, a great moving of His Spirit in His church. But it all begins with you, which is the only person to begin with that God gives you charge over. Which is the only person that's going to make the difference. People sit around and they, they have their little critique pads and then they've got their little, uh, you know, spec pen. And you know, if you are a spec hunter, it means you're a logger. A logger means you've got a log in your eye. Only people that look for specs, problems with other people, are people who have a gigantic log hanging out their eye. So my expression for that is just being a logger. Loggers always have logs around. All of a sudden... What happens is your personal responsibility to be a part of the church that Jesus purchased with his own blood, baptized in the fire of the Holy Ghost. Described to be the full expression of who God himself is and the witness to the earth of his reality and of his presence. Just think about the responsibilities on your shoulders. You may not want to take it up, but I'm going to tell you right now, God's placed it here. He's placed it upon you. He's placed it upon us. And as you become aware of these things, as all of a sudden the spirit of wisdom and revelation hurt, hits you, all of a sudden you recognize, wait a minute, what am I doing so preoccupied with all this other stuff? Why am I thinking about going overseas or going over here or doing this or doing that when all the time God gave me the privilege of presenting me, myself, and I to Him He's given me without limitation an abundance of grace so that the manifestation of the Spirit that is given to everyone may be expressed first in my life. So that I'll have a deep hunger and I'll have a deep thirsting and I'll have a deep longing and I want the visitation of Jesus more than anything. I, you'll hear from my lips a continual cry, even so come quickly, Lord Jesus. My purpose is to be a witness unto these things, holding forth the word of life. You decide what you want to do with your life. But I'm going to tell you right now, you don't need to look far away. You don't need to wonder, you know, what is it that God is going to give you to do? He's given you to do. He's given you to do. What is God going to give me to do? He's given you to do. He's given you, you. If you need me a little emphasis here, you didn't quite catch it. To present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. To so yield yourself over to the Holy Ghost that only Jesus Christ can be seen. To recognize that sorrow and sadness is a sickness and a disease, just like a cold and an infection and a flu. <laughs> to recognize that everything contrary to the demeanor and the excellent character of God that is brought to us by the Holy Ghost is something to be resisted and refused. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, we're not going to blame you for having the flu. We're just going to tell you there's a place of divine healing that you can live in so you don't have to get the flu all the time. We're not going to so much blame you because you're sorrowful and sad. We're just going to tell you there's a place, a happy land, a place full of joy, unspeakable and full of glory that you can live in. You know, there's a big difference between just, you know, pinging people and saying you should, you should, you should, you should. Rather than saying, look, and you can, you can, you can, you can, you can. Hallelujah. Would you like it? Well, if you like it, come and sit down at the... Father has invited you to come and sit down at the table of the Lord. He's invited you to come and take your place among all these that are mighty that stand around about him. When people just get a vision. There was a, a Lithuanian immigrant, 1930s, 1920s, 1930s, a Lithuanian immigrant who read uh, Judges chapter 5. He read about Barak. And he said, I can be Barak. I'll be Barak. And he founded a kibbutz in Israel. Because he had, out of his own passion and out of his own interest, identified with one little word and one little testimony and one little statement of revival. And, he, and it consumed him. His son was Ithut Barak. One of the great generals and leaders of, Israel, of, Israel, of, the, na of the formation of the nation of Israel. All I'm saying is an example. You start identifying with Christ Jesus. You start identifying with something in the word that God the Holy Ghost is behind. You can be anything you want to be in God. 
He said, whatever you do, it'll prosper. Who do you want to be? Huh? If you want to be a this or a be a that, my goodness, you'll struggle all your lifetime with a being a this and that if it's all in the world. But if you want to be what he's made us to be, given us opportunity to be, he may like come along and try to smash that, squelch that, kind of undermine it, kind of downplay it. Forget about it. If you, if you determined in your heart that you're going to follow Jesus Christ and be baptized in the Holy Ghost and be a part of a church filled with the glory of heaven just like there was on the day on Acts chapter 2 verse 4 when they were all gathered together in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, a rushing mighty wind and tongues of, a clothing tongues of fire rested upon each one of them. They all began to speak with the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth as the Holy Ghost, these other terms gave them utterance. Today in a modern day church, people have modeled for them a powerless, empty, lifeless, man-made, man-thing, you know, entertainment center. All they do is sit stand around like they in some kind of a laboratory or some kind of a classroom. This is a place where you to get drunk in the Holy Ghost, get beside yourself, caught up in the heaven, filled up with power and authority to move mountains out the way, to part, to part seas, huh, to walk on water, to raise the dead to life again. That just ain't natural. That just ain't normal. Raising the life to dead again, raising the dead. To life again, just don't fit into the framework of human thinking. We want to get you out of your human thinking. That's what we hear. Hallelujah. God wants to encourage you, show you that He's part, He give it, He's He's pardoned all your sins. He's removed them. He's erased them. He took a giant blood eraser of Jesus Christ and erased your sins by making you a new creation. Nothing counts to God. Somebody said, Well, I go to church all the time and I pray all the time and I read my Bible all the time. God said, that don't count. He said, nothing counts except for a new creation. Hallelujah. Buckle Rasatea. A new creation. I'm about ready to run around, dance, jump, and leap, and shout. A new creation. A new creature. He was said, well, Paul's understanding of the faith. What do you mean, his understanding of the faith? There is only one faith. It means to be born of the Spirit. Hallelujah. It means to be born again. It means to be born of God. It means to be made children, sons of God, heirs of God, co-inheritors with Jesus Christ, new heart, new spirit. Hallelujah. God dwelling with you and in you. Holy Ghost with you and in you. I was telling somebody, hey, you know, God dwells with you and in you. And then I said, well, and then I mentioned to them what the Scripture says. He, he, God, Holy Ghost is with you and in you. And they were having a hard time connecting the Holy Ghost to God. My, have we drifted so far. God, the Holy Ghost is God. Hello. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm just so blessed today to see you here in the meeting. Okay? But there ain't no reason to come in this meeting expecting just to have a religious service. You're supposed to come in this meeting. You know, you come to the meeting expecting to hear something from the preacher. I come to the meeting expect to see whether or not you're born again. I come to the meeting to see whether or not you yielded to the Holy Ghost. That's what I come to the meeting for, see what's going on in your life. People, that, we're going to turn this thing around. <laughs> Amen. Turn the tables on you. Sit around wondering whether or not I got good doctrine. I'm going to see whether or not you live good doctrine. <laughs> Hallelujah. We'll see whether or not you've allowed God the Holy Ghost to take control and see if you, you know, hungry and thirsty after righteousness and just want more. Just say, Father, I just want you. That when, when you begin, when you begin, to give yourself over to such a holy realm of relationship. Ooh, Rabba Naya. Hallelujah. He gives us the privilege and the ability and the grace to grow. Amen. To mature. And the way you grow and the way that you mature is you, uh, just like the way you grow in the natural, you eat and you drink. Hallelujah. The way you grow in the spiritual is the Lord's given us meat indeed and drink indeed. And I wonder if anybody could just guess what that meat indeed is. And what that drink indeed is. That meat indeed is his body, his flesh. I live by the very being of Jesus Christ. That's the only way you're going to grow. <laughs> you know, the scripture says, uh, the, the desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Yeah, there is the living written word of God that we have. But the word was made flesh too. He's not, Moses didn't give them the true manna. He gave them a symbol of the true manna. Jesus came down to heaven. As the true man that we now may live by him. And it's about time God's people to start recognizing that, it's time, that they need to get into the faith. And start saying, for me to live as Christ. That's the faith. That isn't a testimony of what some special act of grace that Paul had received from heaven. It's time you start getting a vision. 
of where God, of, of what you're going to do in the kingdom of God and prophesy yourself over yourself every day. Amen. Amen. Somebody said, what should I do? I said, just pick anything. Just pick anything. Pick a number, win a prize. Just pick anything, because whatever you do, God will prosper you in it. Whatever you do, whatever you set your heart to do. I mean, you just give yourself to the life of Jesus. What better vision could you have? And it's not a generalized thing. It's getting really specific with God. You know, you can begin to name nations. You can begin to name things. I think one of the best things for people to do is to say, I want to be a part of a glorious church that has no spot, no wrinkle, no blemish. I'm be part of a glorious church baptized in the Holy Ghost. So the same things that were happening in the book of Acts would be happening right now in the church that I go to because it's happening in my life. And I'm telling you right now, it doesn't take too many people on the planet in a church, come on, to be giving themselves over to having in their life the expressions that God purposed for us to have in our life. I mean, I don't think, I think it doesn't hardly take more than two or three, and you're going to have yourself a church on fire, and, it's going to, and that church is going to begin to raise up people. Uh, they're going to begin to raise up folks like Phillips and Stevens and, and, and Pauls, and yeah, and then they're going to, and, and ultimately, culture is going to be changed. I'm committed to changing culture. I'm committed. To, I know specifically what I want to do in the change of culture. I believe God that there is a purpose that business must serve ministry instead of ministry serving business. That all the human resources and so much of what God does and in, 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 in the impartation of, of, of abilities within the framework of the church gets sucked up. Sucked out into the world, and now their their whole life and their whole resources about making money for people who are going to just live for the devil. I didn't turn that thing around, but you're not. It's not going to happen without a great moving of the Holy Ghost. Nobody's going to do that through human effort. It ain't going to happen. Nothing from the kingdom of heaven, nothing in the things of the kingdom of God happens through human effort. It happens by the power of the Holy Ghost. It happens because you and I step into a place called revival. When a move of God takes place. Nations change. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, there was a great awakening in the United States of America and abroad in the early 1700s, and it resulted in the formation of a, of a nation called the United States of America and the Declaration of Independence. There were people that came here from all over the place, some of my ancestors, because they weren't allowed to flow in the Holy Ghost. They weren't allowed to lay hands on, on the sick and pray for them. You get put in jail. Now we're here in America, and we're being threatened and I heard someone tell me the other day, look, I was just inviting someone to come to church, and I was overheard, and then it was basically classified as sex in the same illegal activities as a sexual harassment. I said, I'm so glad they're willing to be bold and brave because it's a lie. It's a lie. People want to make believe this isn't this is some communist nation. It's a lie. It is not illegal to invite people to church and tell them about Jesus. It's Satan's threats, it's Satan's accusations, it's Satan's fear tactics it's his manipulation God's people gonna have to rise up see many of God's people just advocate and they say well if I'm gonna keep my job I better keep my mouth shut you know it's like religions like politics well, religion may be like politics but I'm not talking anything about religion I'm talking about the power of life I'm talking about the power of the word of life I'm talking about the power of salvation I'm about I'm talking about the only difference that can can be made for, for human existence we hold forth we have in our lives and are supposed to hold for the word of life that is going to make the difference of whether someone spends eternity in hell or in heaven. And you're going to have to have a revival in your life so that can be burned into your spirit by the Holy Ghost. Otherwise, you're just going to walk around, live and let live. There ain't nobody living in that context. You're all dead. It's dead and let be dead. You know what? It's, it's dead and let be dead. We're going to have to, we're going to, have, to have the same thing that happened when Jesus said, go tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Man, I'm going to tell you right now, when the Holy Ghost comes on the inside of you, he's all about glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ. He's all about the passion and purposes of the church, which Jesus purchased with his own blood. So that there might be a light in the world, a city set upon a hill that cannot be hid. That there might be a testimony of who God is and the power of the resurrection we're in, we're in God on our behalf conquered death so that we need not die. But live forever. He that, eat my he that eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life in him. Huh? And though you, though you die and your body lays down, yet shall you live. 
Hallelujah. And there's no dying for me, for us. We just step out of this realm into the next. When you begin to have the power of God move upon your life, you're, you're not going to sit back and just let the reality that someone that you know, when they die, they're going to open up their eyes, lift up their eyes in hell, being in torment. Who, because they gave themselves over to sin and iniquity, somebody said, well, you know, got all these hypothetical situations. And then they try to, you know, put these hypothetical situations in the context of God's love. And it, listen, you, what you need to do is you need to rise up and recognize that God has put a word in your mouth to invite all men to come and be saved. Saved from what? Saved from their disease. You know, if, if I read to you uh, this morning uh, in the Greek, in the Greek language in Matthew chapter 9, and I read about Jairus, whose daughter was even now dead. I know, I think that some of your translation says at the point of death, and that's just what we call a gloss. So even now dead, so Jairus said. And, and um, But I know that if you just come lay your hands on her, that she will be, and then scripture says, Zotso. She shall be saved. She shall be delivered. Zotso. It's not the, it's not the, it's not the various different words, that there are a few A and other words that we use for healed. It's Zotso, saved. Delivered. And then when the woman with the issue of blood says, I, she said, I, I, she knew within herself, or she had said within herself, if I but just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be Zotso, saved. Delivered. Look, there's a lot of people out there that want to be saved and delivered from their sin and their, and their oppression and, and, and their sorrow and their pain. They just haven't. What happens? You come talking about Jesus. They, rec they equate it to religion because there's been no real move of God in the midst of the city. That has grown beyond what Satan has been able, as it were, to eclipse. And, you know, I, I've been involved in many beginnings in God where religion just came around and persecuted till it was destroyed almost. It's where it was always going back, as it were, into a recessed place. It happened for hundreds of years where the church hid away in places like the Walden Sea Mountains in, in Switzerland and other places in the Middle East because the great entity of the Roman Catholic Church, the great entities of the Orthodox Church, would uh, persecute it and oppress it to annihilation. As soon as a move of God, they would say, that's not true, that's, that's heresy. And as soon as somebody began to speak with other tongues, that's heresy. As soon as somebody began to lay hands on the sick, that's heresy. My great, 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 great aunt, Mary Dyers, first of, she was actually put in Fox's Book of the Martyr in 2000, year 2000. She was first American martyr. Why was she martyred? Laying hands on the sick. They're Puritan said, you're not allowed to do that. That's witchcraft. Now, she, was a, she was a Quaker, and she shook a little bit when she prayed for the sick. They quaked. That's why they're called Quakers. They quaked. There were, there were Quakers, and there were Shakers. They had a few different beliefs. Oh, that's witchcraft. Ah, that's not God. Today, as soon as we saw the Basadera Megalima, Sapata, Kobaruma, Stifrevatea begins to rise up in a church, people start dancing around and shouting and look like drunken men. Everybody says, oh, false, false, false. In religion, not the world. The world, if they just knew the party was going on, they would be interested. They're tired of living in sorrow and suffering and pain, sickness and disease. Jesus came to save them. What's going to happen when you begin to devote your life? People are don't, won't devote their life because persecution. A little persecution comes, and, and, you know, they receive the Word of God. They're believing in revival and move of God, and they received it with a, you know, ready heart. And then because they weren't deeply, the seed wasn't deeply rooted because there was still a lot of rocks in their life, if you would. As soon as a little persecution came, they just withered up and said, That's right, I shouldn't be going over there with those Holy Ghost people. I'm going to go back to the Baptist church. I can do that. My dad's an ordained Southern Baptist minister. Many of my cousins are in the Baptist church. My great-great-grandfather great was a Baptist preacher who came in the, Holy Ghost, in the power of the Holy Ghost in the 1920s. Stepped into a great mantle of the gifts of healing. Hallelujah. 
Grandpa Creaseman. And I can't help it, people backslide. I can say the same thing about Assembly of God Church. They backslid too. They left the Pentecostal movement just for a bunch of religion, just so they can have more whatever, fanfare, be more respectable. Some people get back to God. Hallelujah. Some people get back to hungering, and thirsting after the kingdom, after his righteousness, after his glory, where Jesus is being made manifest by the unlimited moving of the Holy Ghost. As long as people are going to be in control, God, the Holy Ghost can't get in control. You know, if I could just take people, and I'm trying to do it, just take people and just step by step in a school of spirit, should train them how easy it is to hear the Holy Ghost. You can hear the Holy Ghost, it will, it will blow your mind. It will shock you out of your mind how plain His voice is, how impactive His voice, how arresting His voice is. But what happens is people constantly live under the voice of financial pressure. And they do things subconsciously, don't even know why they're making the decision. They make the decision. They, they're... Even in this place, people are sincere. You love the Lord. You want to serve Him. You're following Him. But you don't know how many decisions and choices in life you make through financial pressure and Satan uses as a manipulative tool to all override everything that God would otherwise do in your life. You've got to learn to recognize it so you can shut it down, not have it anymore, not come under that pressure to say, we're going to look to you, Lord. We're going to watch what God will do when He does it. Amen. We're going to look at this America that Father's planned for our life. Not only financial pressures, social pressures, peer pressures, in other words, circumstance pressures. You don't know. Until you give yourself to this, you don't know how much you're being ruled by other voices. But all oh, what happens? When all of a sudden you begin to obey the simplest simplicity of the Word of God and recognize that this is why Jesus said, don't be concerned about what you eat or what you wear. Don't let yourself get wrapped up in, you can't, in finances. You can't serve God and mammon. And he goes through all of the lists, and we don't understand it. We try to say, well, how does that make any sense? Because we all got to provide for ourselves, and God wants us to be responsible. And we come up with all these crazy arguments. Argument is another word for rebellion. I'm sorry to say. Don't argue with God. Just say, Lord, Lord show me what this means. Show me how to do this. Because really, Father wants to give you the wisdom of the ages, and you're going to try to operate in the wisdom of your age? I'm 56 years old. Hey, listen, if we were going to operate here today in the wisdom of my age, let's all just stop right now and go home. Nobody come back. Because ain't nobody can do anything to help anyone else. Only God can save. Only the Holy Ghost. God, the Holy Spirit, has come to show us the way to walk, and He brings to us the wisdom and the insight of the ages. You don't have to live in sickness and disease. You don't have to live spiritually impoverished, physically impoverished, financially impoverished. But you're going to have to let. You're going to have to understand how to get those voices out of your life that would rule over you in those realms, and just with total abandonment, forsake everything and come follow Jesus in the realms of the spirit. We would think, well, if I'm going to forsake everything, go follow Jesus, got to quit my job, live in a cave. No, you got to just simply surrender over to what he wants to do with your life right now, right where you're at. And give him the full control and full dominion for perfection and provision and protection over your life. And, and cease from your own works. And you'll shut down the voices automatically. People get in ruts because they don't listen. They won't hear. They won't heed. They always, when we're speaking, they're always trying to interpret it in their mind. You don't need to interpret this. Always trying to figure out, how does this fit into my life? Forget about it. How do you fit into his life? <laughs> Forget about how he fits into your, your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. All you got to do is say, Lord, I want to get this. I, I want to hear your voice. I discovered these things in God because I was so desperate about hearing his voice. And then I would see people who were just so good at hearing the voice of the Holy Ghost. And I just like, I wouldn't get mad, but I would just collapse and go, oh God, please, I want that to do. What about me? Lord, show me. I want to get this. I want to hear your voice. I want to, I want to, you know, it's terrible, man, to be blindfolded and trying to hit the dartboard. I don't care how big it is. Huh? Even if the dark board took up half of the space that you were in, if somebody put a blindfold on you, spin you around, more than likely you're not going to hit the wall, the, the board. It's time to be able to see. He's come so we can see, so we can hear. But he said you can't, you can't have all these other things, that you're, these voices that you're listening to, and you're responding out of them, the fear, the, the concern, the worry. You need to get a vision for your life. I tell people all the time, 
Let me see your 10-year plan. Let me see your 30-year plan. 30-year plan. Well, I'm just going to, I'm just available to God. You know what? You're lost in the woods. And because you're lost in the woods, you're going to spend your whole life walking in a circle. It's a proven fact. If you get lost, you walk in a circle. You need to get purposeful in your life. Here's where I'm going. Here's what we're going to do in God. And it's not generalized. It's specific. Hallelujah. You begin to lay hold on things in God. I had laid hold on something in God many years ago. And I said, Lord, I want to be right at the center of a great outpouring of your spirit that changes the old dynamics and expression of the church. That the church truly is baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire, moving and functioning in these works and greater works. And I'm not letting up. I'm very specific. I do something every day in it. And, of course, there was other things in that, too, with missions and Things that I laid my, I laid, I laid my focus in God to have these gifts of the Spirit operating in my life, this power and authority of the kingdom operating in my life in this specific way, and in that we now have a direction. God could begin to show us where we're missing it. Otherwise, we're just kind of wandering around. Yeah, I just can do. I'm just available to God for God. Just whatever He wants me to do. I, I just want to serve Him, you know, but. I got a bunch of finances I got to take care of, and, and uh, I just want to serve him. I'm just doing, I'm available. I just, oh, I'm so hungry for God. I mean, goodness gracious. And my, I'm just so overwhelmed with the situations and the concerns of life. I'm getting dizzy. I'm about to fall over. <laughs> Tough walking in a circle, round, round, and round. Because you miss out on your inheritance. You got to walk in a straight line to get to your inheritance, you got to walk in a direction. I want you to open your Bibles to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 11. Takadea say. Hokamanane apotaya. Astakeda name for today. Shilobo korisi piataina. Hallelujah. Where's Daniel at? Shikara masateradea apa. Hala si viki ishipelo. Hebre bestikina malade. Yeah, go get him for me. Balas the kupana nea piashapolataya apa. Hallelujah. Provo Romande. Hallelujah. You know how much God loves you? He's like standing there going, What? I'll ask me. I'll give you whatever you want. Ask me. And he's just so tr- d- devoted to just saying, Look, man, come on. Just come over here. I'll make your life so amazing. Come here. I want, I want to be your father. Let me, I want you to be my son. Come here. What, he says, he says, what man is there that if he has a son says to his father, give me bread, that his father would give him stone. He says, there's no way a man's going to do that. How much more am I devoted to giving you whatever you ask, to making your life what I purposed it to be when I formed Adam from the fine dust of the earth? People, we got to quit letting this world define who we are. Our culture define who we are. The prince of the power of the air define who we are. Manipulation of circumstances and finance and cares of this life define who we are. Cares. Riches. Pleasures. They destroy you. CRP. Huh. That's about it. Is what it is. That's what... That's what... Paul said it is. He says it's dung. What kind of dung? You, what? You just put the cares on. But you get you get on the you get up in front of you the cares you allow in your life because they're keeping you from hearing the voice of the Holy Ghost. They're keeping you from moving with God. They're keeping you from asking God. They're keeping you from believing God. They're keeping you from pressing in. You 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 just. You just line up all those riches that are so important to you. Put your little mortgage in there too. 
and all the pleasures. Just put everything in it. Just look at it and say, listen, it isn't that the Lord doesn't want to bless you. He wants to bless you. You just got to watch out because you make that God in your life. And the bottom line is you won't hear the voice of God because all you do is continually are led by the voices of their influences. You, you don't. Your mind will play tricks on you. You do not have the intelligence. You do not have the perception nor the capacity to sort these things out. The only way that you can possibly have wisdom and insight is to taking heed unto his word as unto a light in a dark place. Then he'll show you. Ah, I had no idea. I love God with all my heart. I want to serve him. But I've been living my life by the voices surrounding me and the things that I've made important in this world. I've allowed my life to be influenced and literally dominated by fear. True. You start getting all concerned about your finances. What is that? Fear. Hallelujah. I told my kids, I said, listen, you didn't go to school to do something. I sent you to school in academics for one purpose. So you can get disciplined. It's done. You're done. So that you can learn skills, basic skills, to be able to have more flexibility to serve God, do whatever God has you to do in natural things. It's done. I don't expect you to be a, you got an MBA, I don't expect you to be a businessman. I expect you to be a kingdom of God man. Uh, we didn't send you to school for any other reason. Just we want you to have focus and discipline in your life. Develop discipline is a great school for discipline. Huh. People go to school and they say, well, I've gone to school so long, now I've got to do this. Who, whose voice are you listening to? You're being led by a lie. Not by the Holy Ghost. You're shutting down the voice of the Holy Ghost. He can't talk to you like that. Listen to me. I've got to do this because of this. I've got, I got to go here because of these reasons. And that. No, you don't. Are you in 2 Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11? Well, stay right there while I read a bunch of other verses of Scripture to you. <laughs> if you're sick or diseased in your body today, God wants to deliver you. If you're sick or diseased in your spirit today, God wants to deliver you. Hmm? God's people come down with a... With, a, with, the, with the virus of sorrow, the virus of earthly concerns, the virus of intimidation, the viruses of fear. We want to get you healed. Whatever is going on, if, you, if, if, if finances rule your life, we want you to, we just, we want to bring that to an end today. We want you to bring, we want to bring that to an end in your life. We want you to transition from finances to faith. How many of you are debt-free in here? Am I the only debt-free person? Just a couple of us. I don't have any bills. They all belong to God. I don't have any debts. A lot of people, oh, man, I'm good, guys. So I'm in debt. Well, that's your problem right there. You can't hear the voice of God. You just got all these debts. You bought, you, it's, you're living your own life. What you bought wasn't for the kingdom of God. You went in debt for yourself. And you're going to have to get out of that. You're going to have to say, oh, Lord, come and deliver me. I borrowed an axe. It flew into the water, it's drunk, and it sunk. And now I'm just sitting here, and I mess, I messed up. Mm -hmm. Prophets here today to show you how the axe head can float. We want, to, we, want, we want every debt that you had to be God's debt. We want every purpose that you had to be God's purpose. Hallelujah. Every pressure that you have is God pressure. Hallelujah. It's his, it's his, to, it's his work to do. Did you know that God will both will and do of his good pleasure in you if you'll let him? Yes. That everything that he's commanded, he's also empowered you with the ability to do what he's commanded you. But if you look to yourself, you'll never be able to do it. All right, have you begun in the Holy Ghost now to be made perfect by your own human ability? Somebody said, what's the difference between the works of faith and the works of law? It is by the Holy Ghost instead of by the human ability. It's just a transition. Now living by the power of God. Looking to Him for all of the resources that I need to accomplish His purpose. But making His purpose all that I desire. My only purpose is His purpose. And I get real specific about that. Well, I don't know what I'm going to do in my life. It was okay for Daniel to shrug at me when he was four or five years old. But if he was sh still shrugging, I'd be going, Oh, God, we're going to have to have a fasting prayer meeting. Man. We, 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 had to, we had to get a breakthrough. I, I got Daniel down here from Children's Church because I have to leave a little early today, and I'm just going to have him do the altar service for me. I'm going to call you to salvation. We're going to call you to salvation. I want to call you to salvation like Jairus. He said, All I, I, I know you just come and t just 
Put your hand on my daughter. Even though she is now dead, I know that she will live. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus said, I will come and, he said, I will come and save her. I will come and zotzo her. I will come and deliver her. Hallelujah. Just to grab a hold of this opportunity that you have in God to be set free. No matter where you're at in your life. Whether you don't know Christ Jesus. And I look around here this morning. And unfortunately, everybody in here has made some commitment to the Lord Jesus. It's unfortunate in one way. It's very blessed in another. I just would desire and wish that more people would bring the lost in the church. Not the lost that don't want to be found. But the lost that want to be found. We got something for the lost that want to be found. And that's why usually it's good to just go after the sick and the disease. Because they don't want to be sick no more. Huh? They don't want to, they don't want to, they've got some terrible disease. They can't even walk. They would like to get up and move around. Bring them. They're not going to be sitting there the whole time critical. Believing that their grandfather swung from a monkey, uh, from a tree. And then we, we somehow are, you know, really out to lunch and backwards that we don't believe all that stuff too. Or whatever. You know, that crazy, those crazy things that go on in the crazy world out there. That people actually believe that stuff is amazing to me. <laughs> Father's here to Father's here to touch it. He's here to you, you want to begin to hear the voice of, of the Lord. You want to begin to hear Him in such an impactive way. It is it becomes so strong it, it knocks you down. There's a still small voice that will overwhelm your life. Here people, people are, so many people are caught up in listening to circumstances. And, 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 you know, God created and caused the wind that exploded the rocks. The great wind. As Ezekiel came and stood there before his presence. He, ca he caused the great earthquake. He caused the great fire. But he wasn't in them. He wasn't speaking in him. He's there to speak with a still small voice. Hallelujah. You're gonna have to get you're gonna have to learn, you're gonna have to shut all the voices because you're not gonna talk over top of all the voices. You will not talk over top of all the voices. When we become so desperate for him, we become so in love with him that just all we want is him. When we ask hunger and thirst, all I want is you. I see, I don't have any. You know, people have things to fall back on. Well, I'm of this, and I'm of that, and I'm of the other thing, and I've accomplished this, and I've accomplished that. I'm nothing to fall back on so that I could have my identity and my self-worth wrapped up in that. All I have is Jesus, and that's all I want. And, and, with, and with every area of deficit in my life is a heartache to me. I'm not going to go retreat to something in this world to, to somehow give me meaning and value. I want Him. I want what He died for me to have. I want what the Holy Ghost is declared to be in the Word of God and how He expresses Himself through His people. I want that. That's all I want. I want to be seen as one sitting in His presence, moving by the power of His hand and of His will. Let me read this verse of Scripture to you here. Just stay there in 1 Thessalonians. Hallelujah. Kata sayapana. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. In those to Kirinia, she pi. Ha ha. Lay mine today. People think it's strange today, but that is the only way that the church functions in the New Testament. The church was born in Asada Day Rimaniah. It was born on the day of Pentecost. That's when the church was born. It's strange today because we have models of religion, the Christian religion, not the relationship that Christ Jesus died and rose again for us to have, not the expressions of the kingdom of God, the power of God. Paul said, I fully preach the gospel with the demonstration of the Holy Ghost, with signs and wonders. There's no other way to preach the gospel but by the demonstration of the power of God, the power of the Holy Ghost, and the signs and wonders. That's it. That's it. That's it. The, all, all the rest of them are, are, are false models that everybody has now turned and said, that's the true model. So you make the false model the true model, then the true model by default becomes a false model. It becomes false. 
Religion has fought against the Holy Ghost since the day that the Holy Ghost came. Baptized men. But the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. I have you to know God's Christ Jesus is coming for a glorious church. Hallelujah. It's one on fire moving in the glory of heaven. I'm telling you right now, it's part of the Joel's prophecy. Um, they, it is the fire of God so made manifest with such glory and intensity that it's like a fire burning before us and behind us. And there is such a great bringing in of a harvest that even every, that everything is consumed. Though it be like a garden of Eden before us, it becomes like a desolate wilderness behind us because we just roll through the thing with the glory of heaven. You think about what happened. You think about what happened in, uh, in, in, in the late 60s, early 70s, what we call the Jesus revival or Jesus movement. There were so many people coming into the kingdom, it was rushing into the kingdom of God. I stood in those meetings. I was in those meetings. I was a little guy. It was really radical from the time I was nine years old till I was about 13 years old. It was really the intensity of that particular revival. It was powerful. It was beautiful. All, all everybody wanted. You know why people rushed into the kingdom? Because they wanted to do the works of Jesus. They wanted to live a life just like Jesus. They were tired of religion. They wanted to be like Jesus. Everybody was pressing into the kingdom of God, pressing into the realms of the demonstration of the power of God. It was a, it was that which God the Holy Ghost did in the earth because there was people willing to participate with Him. And in those days, it didn't matter. You just come up to anybody. It didn't matter how radical they were. You just say, look, Christ Jesus is here. And, I mean, you know, He wants to deliver you. And it was just easy to get people saved, get people changed, transformed by the power of God. I'm believing for something even greater in this day now. Not later, now. You waiting for later, you need to get in the now. I believe, that, I believe that if you just would give yourself to studying just a little bit, Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, by the time you get to Matthew chapter 7, it builds you to a place to where the Lord's just saying, look, I'm going to do whatever you ask me to do. If you're just simply willing to come over here and be with me, I'm, I'm going to make your life so wonderful, so beautiful. I'm going to supply everything that I have. It's going to be yours. And, but if people would get into Matthew 5, 6, and 7 and live it, their whole lives would be changed. Everything would be changed. All the problems you're having and dealing with would be solved by simple obedience and cooperation with God. If there's any word that I have right now for the year 2015, it's one word. Guess what that word is? Participate. Participate with the Holy Ghost. Quit. Stop doing it your own. Stop doing it your own way. Stop doing whatever you think is good. Start doing what God's called it good. The Lord says to us, He says, turn your back. I'm going to give you just a, a, an overview. He's basically, turn your back on everything that everybody else is interested in in, in the life. And verse 31, seek the kingdom of God and everything that everybody else is running after and making lords over their life. It won't be first in your life. It will just be added to you. I'll take care of you. You'll step into the realms of faith that will call things as, that are not as though they were, and you'll have them. You'll have great provision. I'll make you wealthy. God makes, God makes wealthy and adds no sorrow with it. Man makes himself wealthy and only inherits a bunch of sorrow and fears and damnation and many snares. Yeah. God wants us to get this thing turned around. But he says then, fear not, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And I just want to... I want to underscore that in reference to Matthew chapter 7 really quickly. You just stay in 1 Thessalonians chapter, or 2 Thessalonians chapter, uh, chapter, uh, chapter 1 verse 11. And, and, I, and I'm going to catch up with you here in just a few minutes. The Lord in chapter 7, you know, and we laid out a whole bunch of things on Wednesday night on this. And I'm not going to go back over them. They're very important for you to grab the hold of them if you want to walk in the Spirit. If you want to move with God, it's just His Word. His Word's declaring to us. It's not just, you know, empty ideas and just, you know, a random bunch of commandments. It's very specific. 
instruction that the Lord gives us so that we can live out his life on this earth. So that we can yield ourselves to the Holy Ghost. So that we can yield ourselves to the glory and the power of heaven. And so he says to us, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? That's verse 11. It's all once again in context of just turn your back on what everybody else is going after and what everybody else is doing, what everybody else thinks is important, and their clothes and their food and their, and their fame and their fortune and their purpose and their identity and all their fighting and fussing and bickering among each other. Just come over here, recognize for everyone to ask and it should be given to you, seek and you should find, knock and the door shall be opened. What you ask for, you should also seek or pursue. And that which you are asking and seeking and pursuing, there is no way that you're going to even let up until you have in your possession all that he has supplied. It's yours. The door is open for you to come right on in and have it. Interact with him. The prayer of importunity where you keep banging on the door and you know that in contrast to uh, the man who is in bed who... Uh, though he was a friend, would not rise to take care of his friend who was banging on the door. But he got up just simply because he knew he wasn't going to go away and he wasn't going to get any sleep until he got up and gave his friend that was banging at the door whatever it was he was asking for. Father wants to give you and I the shield of faith so that we're, we're able to stand against all these things that would try to discourage us and dissuade us. The shield of faith is a powerful weaponry not to be stopped. In those things which you've asked for and that you're pursuing. <laughs> so that you can enter into all the fullness of those things that ultimately in many respects is only going to be supplied and come into your life. Because you're willing to grow and mature into it. You're willing to be prepared unto every good work. You're willing to let God lay the foundation and build the house and develop you. <laughs> in, 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 fun, in, the, in functioning after his character after his manner of glory and power and majesty. Come on, give yourself a break. Huh? Who, who, who of themselves can, can walk in the glory and the majesty of the Almighty God? Well, that's everybody says, well, no, that's impossible. But, but Father has devoted us to us being co-inheritors with Jesus and being heirs with God and supplying all these things of heaven, all that we have need of. How do you define what you have need of? You know how I define what I have need of? These works and greater works shall ye do. These signs shall follow them that believe. That's what I have need of. The, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. The signs and the wonders, the miracles, the life, and the demonstration of Jesus Christ. The ability to turn people from the power of Satan to God. That's what I have need of. He's going to supply what I have need of. What do you have need of? Enough money to pay your mortgage, your rent? That's, come off it. Get out of that garbage can. Step over here into this realm of life. Get out of that place of, spirit, place of spiritual blindness. And step over here into the place of sonship. See, the Lord placed us in, in, a, in a place called Uya. This is Uya Theseus. Uya Theseus. Theseus is a place of sonship. Uya Theseus. Some people translated adoption. We're not adopted. We born into this. We born in the Word. We're born in the Spirit. We're not adopted. Uyothesia is the place of sonship. And it's proven in Galatians chapter 4, 6 and 7. By, by context. So I don't have to rely upon what, you know, somebody said the word, word meant from ancient, you know, Attic Greek or whatever. Uyothesia is something that Israel had. It belonged to them. God gave them the place of sonship. And Uyothesia. Thesia literally means that. Thesia is the word for place. Uyo, son. The place of a son. Somebody said, well, place of a son, that must be an adoption. No, you, miss, you, you weren't born again, so you don't understand. You weren't born of the Spirit, so you, you're messing it up. Huh? You're just trying to figure all this stuff out some, by some linguistic pattern. Now, what are we going to do with this? Oh, Shepayalan. He's made us sons. Put us in the place of the son. Give us authority to be sons. That's what I have need of. I, I have need of all that he supplied. I have need of all that he wants me to be. He wants me to, Jesus said, come follow me. He, he wants us to come and imitate him. That's what I have need of. I have need of that ability to imitate you, Lord. I have need of the ability not to have my whole life and identity wrapped up in all the stuff that I've been taught from a child 
to have my life and my meaning and my worth defined by. And Lord, the Lord knows the pressure of it. The culture that has made us modern day slaves to the prince of the power of the air. No way. Then all of a sudden you get a revelation of it, that's where you're going to go. No way. You're going to rise up. You're going to be stirred up with his righteous cause. You say, I'm, I'm tired of bowing down to this stuff. Somebody says, oh, well, does that mean we need to go quit our jobs? No. God wants you to shine with the glory of heaven right at your job. And that is it. He wants you to quit listening to the voices that so influence you. That's what he wants. He wants you to start living this life in the spirit, living your life in the Holy Ghost. He's with you and in you. See, I can't, I have to go, and I don't know anything about preaching a sermon that can be done in 45 minutes. I, that is a talent that I never want to master. I like, I like, I like just sitting in the presence of the Lord. I love just com communing with Him. I love talking of His Word. I love singing His praises. I love touching a realm of glory to where I begin to just... <laughs> pass out in his presence be a, overwhelmed with joy unspeakable and full of glory have peace that passes all understanding I have need of this life of God that has all these wonderful expressions that are just relegated by many people into a category called the fruits of the spirit my goodness is that a fruit of the spirit it's the life of God manifested in you and me don't get caught up in terminologies this is the power and the glory of God supplied to us so we can walk around in goodness. Goodness isn't defined just on the, uh, on the level of, of all the grandeur that you can define it by. But God said, I'll cause my goodness to pass before you, Moses. And my goodness is going to bring forth the expression of all my fullness. <laughs> and God said, we get to live in goodness all day long. Why would we do anything else? If we were our masters... If we were really, really, truly doing what we wanted to do, we'd live in goodness all day long. Nobody's their own master. Satan is your master. The prince of the power of the air is your master. Or God, the Holy Ghost, is your master. And people are waffling back, staggering between two opinions because they don't know how to discern good from evil, light from darkness, God from Satan, heaven from hell. Life from death. Come on, people. It's time for there to be a revival. It's time for there to be an awakening among God's people. Hallelujah. There's then sinners will be converted. Then transgressors will be taught his way. When you and I get it right. Hallelujah. Where's that going to happen? Right where you're sitting right now. You don't need to be transported to Mars or across town or anywhere else. Asia, Middle East, Africa, right where you're sitting. You don't need to go anywhere until the power of God has come upon you and you know how to function and flow and operate. And this, that God demands that we have if we're going to be his witnesses. It's feeling like the plane's going to have to wait. We're going to make it. Let me just read this verse of scripture. <laughs> Pastor Daniel's going to preach tonight. It's going to be good. We just, what we do is we just lock into a hunger of the manifest presence of the Lord. That's all we do. We begin to talk about faith. We begin to talk about Jesus. We begin to talk about the Holy Ghost, what it is he wants to do in our midst. And it starts sorting the thing out. Chaff gets sorted from the wheat. The goat from the sheep. Everything get, begins to get divided. The light from the darkness. The wrong from the right. And then the Lord begins to breathe on the thing that's truth. Begins to breathe on it. Hallelujah. Gets people's hearts in the right place. I pray in Jesus' name you die and go to heaven. Amen. Right now. Paul said in Colossians 1.13, we've been translated from the kingdom of this world into the kingdom of the dear son. That's heaven. I pray in Jesus' name you die. Go to heaven. By being buried with him by baptism into his death. 
Somebody said, well, we just die unto ourselves. The scripture doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. He says, deny yourself. It's much more difficult. And first thing you got to do is recognize yourself because most people do not have that, that sense of discernment. And recognize that self is going to stand in the way of you hearing, being led by and overwhelmed by the power of the Holy Ghost. I can help you. Self is every bad thing. Holy Ghost is every good thing. How that help you? Self is every fearful thing, intimidated thing, huh? Weak thing. And God, the Holy Ghost, is everything opposite of that. Just deny the stuff that says you can't do it. Deny it. First Thessalonians. Master tell you name. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, you cause your word to burn like a fire in yes. every person's heart and burn out the religion and burn out the self-trust and burn out all the other garbage of lies and deceptions. The only thing keeps people from walking with God is deception. I, forgive me while I try to get you out of the snare. Forgive me while I try to untangle you. I'm tired of seeing you hanging there by your heels. Get you out the snare. Hallelujah. I wanted to talk about, I want to just, I'm trying to get to just talking nothing about God's good pleasure. Father's done all this for us out of his own good pleasure. He who spared not his own son, he spared no expense to have a relationship with you. How shall he not also by him freely give us all things? He got, hey, peace on earth, goodwill towards man. I'm telling you, God has come. He's come to draw us unto himself, to invite us to come in. This peace on earth, goodwill, God's good pleasure. He's done it according. He's, 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 he's predestinated us to the huyothesia. Of sons. Huh? Ephesians 1 5. Now I'm going to read this and then I got to go. I don't want to go. If I, if I couldn't take this glory with me, I would stay right here. I would not leave. I like to preach until everybody comes under the influence of the Holy Ghost. And I can tell when people aren't. I can tell when, when we're, who's under the influence of the Holy Ghost. And who's not under the influence of the Holy Ghost, the Lord gives me this discernment so I know how long to preach. <laughs> Somebody said, can you preach shorter? Yeah, if everybody come under the influence of the Holy Ghost, we preach shorter. And then we just move into the demonstration stuff. Hallelujah. We learn into, we move into the empowerment so that God's people can be perfected now and, and built up and, and given that skill set, as it were, in understanding how to move in the power of the Holy Ghost. But the Lord says this. Wow, it's hard for me to get to this. Because there's so many things to say before I get here, but I'm going to go ahead and give it. Wherefore, also, we pray always for you, and we're doing this. Wherefore, we also pray always for you, and, and I pray that you'll grab a hold of the power of prayer as well. That God would count you worthy of this calling. Listen, he loves every one of us. He's brought every one of us into this place, a relationship with him out of his own good pleasure. And he's looking for some people who's willing to go all the way with him and step into the demonstration of his power and become the effective witnesses that he has given us the power and the ability to be in this earth instead of all of us being in kindergarten in the kingdom of God. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Our being below, be, below, be, being below driving age. <laughs> it's time to get some keys so we go somewhere. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That he fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness. Woo. God, who both, God who both wills will also do of his good pleasure in you. God, who he's the one who ordained all this and fashioned all of it and predestinated all of it. He's the one who's given us the, all this ability. It's his idea that we be baptized in his presence. It's his idea that we go forth everywhere demonstrating the power of the kingdom of God with great signs and wonders, having the same life and glory that Jesus Christ manifested on this earth when he walked here 2,000 years ago. It's his idea. All you and I got to do is be willing to. Thank you. That's it. Participate. Hallelujah. God fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. Why? That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ 
may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and that's a huge statement what has grace purchased for us and provided these works and greater works this divine authority, baptism of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost in you and with you, rivers of living water pouring out of you. Hallelujah. We love the presence of Jesus more than anything. We love the name of Jesus. To be able to create an atmosphere in this place where you can touch heaven, that's the whole purpose of the ministry of Jesus Christ. The reason that he has ordained us to speak on his behalf so that we can speak out faith, so we can speak out the word. Because we know that wherever the word of God is spoken, there will be the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. There will be the life-changing power, the healing, the answer, the solution for everything that you need. We, this is what I live for. This is what I've grown up living for. This is the purpose of our lives to demonstrate, to communicate, and to participate with the presence of the Holy Ghost, the presence of Jesus Christ. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Now, the Lord Jesus is here to meet every single need. Every single need. Pastor Mark was just saying, sometimes it takes a while to create an atmosphere of faith. It takes a while to convince you that really your problem and your situation isn't worth living in. There's a much better realm, and we're, we want you to come and taste this realm. Because if you taste of it, you get addicted to it. You get hooked on it. People have asked me, oh, man, you didn't ever go through a rebellious time in your life. What's wrong with you? Well, I got addicted to the presence of God. And I found out, I found out that there's nothing that can even compare, nothing that can even come close to it. And so we want you to get addicted to the presence of God. The love of God, it's so rich, it's so free. There's nothing, there's nothing that will fulfill. There's nothing that will even come close to what the Lord Jesus Christ has already proven that he's done for you and what he will continue to do for you every single day. And it's easy to talk about, and it's easy to flow in. Just live out, live out the life. So I want everybody to stand with me. Father, I thank you for the overwhelming presence of the Holy Ghost right now in every life. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are here to provide the answer. Father, to bring the solution. Lord Jesus, right now you see every heart that is in need. Father, you see every physical ailment every issue, every circumstance. And I thank you by your Holy Ghost and power right now in Jesus' name. Healing, restoration, comfort, strength in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we do not want to come into a service and not touch your presence. Father, I ask you right now that every person would get real with you. Father, that they would bring before you their, their life as a living sacrifice. Not to come to another church service and, and leave the same way that they came. But, Father, to leave different, to leave different, not to be satisfied and settled out doing things the same way. Father, we are desperate for your presence. We are desperate for the manifestation of the Holy Ghost in a radical way, that the fire of the Holy Spirit burn, that the revival fire that you so desperately want to pour out will be in this place, will be in our lives, will be the way that we live in Jesus' mighty name. Right now, Holy Spirit, touch every life. Holy Spirit, I thank you right now that you're working. Father, we love you more than anything. <laughs> you're so good. You're so wonderful. You're so awesome. Glorious, glorious, glorious. Wonderful, Lord Jesus. If you have any heartache, if you have any physical sickness, anything that is coming against your body, if you have a need, I want you to come up here. We're going to pray with you. The Holy Ghost is here to meet your need. It is so amazing that the Father is so faithful. All we have to do is as little children, we speak his word. We believe what he has purposed for us to speak that's things that he has put in our mouth to speak he already has given us the words to say and all we do is we simply believe we simply participate with what it is he is doing and he is always there to confirm the demonstration of the holy spirit is always there so if you have any need come the holy ghost is going to touch you he's going to fill you 
If you are standing out there right now and you have not felt the presence of God like you've never felt it before, I want you to lift your, your, your hands and close your eyes because, look, God is so good. He's so merciful. He continually calls us. It's like he convinces us. He spends so much time convincing us over and over again. He's saying, look, I want you to live my life. I, want, I, really, I really have a good life for you. I really want you guys to come and please. You, you want to be my children. I want you to come and live the goodness. If you're settling out for anything short of that, I don't know what's wrong with you. Come, I will pray with you. You have mental problems. Okay? The Lord loves you so much. He wants to take you deeper. He wants to show himself to you. But he's never going to force himself upon you. He's never going to do it. What he asks is that you will willingly come and believe. You will willingly come and bring yourself to him. And he will always rush in. He will always be there to touch. But it's a lifestyle change. It's a lifestyle change. That's what Pastor Mark has been ministering. The change in the way we think, the way we live, what it is that touches our emotions, what it is that touches our passions, those things that inspire us. The Holy Spirit needs to be your inspiration. And when He is, when you consecrate yourself to only being inspired by Him, only really being touched deeply by Him, everything about your life will change. You won't be able to stand in the presence of God with the, uh, I don't know what that look on your face is. It's so easy to live in the realms of the Spirit. There's no reason to not. There's no reason to not. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we love you so much. We love you so much. If you have a need, just raise your hands up. Just bring it to the Father. He's here. He's here. You don't need me to pray over you. The Holy Spirit's been praying over you. He's, he's moving on you. Every need is being met right now. Every need is being met right now. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for a level of the demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost like has never been seen before, where every need is answered. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Father. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. You're so good. You're so good. You're so good. <laughs> I love this. I love it. Pastor Mark, it's like, it's like he just went and he did all the work. He did all the labor. And he's like, okay, come in, re reap the rewards. I love, I look, I, I love the presence of Jesus more than anything. I love the presence of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is here. The Lord Jesus is here. Thank you, Father.